Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Monday, April 4th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. All right, we've got Mark 14, verses 32 through 52. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And he came, and again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd, of, crowd with swords and clubs, and the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, from the chief priests and the scribes and elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out, at, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was in, with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so this week um, we will be getting uh, Mark's passion account um, ahead of Holy Week. Uh, and then the, the Holy Week daily readings, um, I believe they go to Hebrews, I think. Anyway, so then we, we switch over to Holy Week where we'll get... Um, you know, more of the passion readings in our regular services at church and whatnot. So we kind of get a, a little advance on the uh, passion and Easter story uh, this week. And, um, you know, this is, you know, this, we, we see Jesus um, and we see his humanity here. You know, he was fully man, fully, fully God, both things, uh, 100% together all the time, completely together is not, not something you can se separate or like have like well he's half and half it was like no he was was he is fully human and fully fully divine uh, completely and so um here we see him in his humanity um you know recognizing the 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 great pain and and suffering he's about to endure knowing what it will cost him um and that, so we see that you know his death was not just you know, it's like, oh, well, he's God. Of course, he's going to, he's going to rise again. What, what's he worried about? And what we see here um, in, in the garden and, and what we also see on the cross when he um, cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We see that he has, he has even taken away from himself any hope that he might have. 
any glimmer of relief knowing that, um, oh, on the third day I'll rise again. Like, this is not the end. Because if he goes to the cross with, even with, with the knowledge that, and, of, and hope and understanding that this is only temporary, that he will, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll rise again on the third day. Um, you know, he, he, he won't suffer completely. He, he won't have the same kind of, he won't suffer the way we, we would suffer, um, you know, the, without, without Christ. Um, that is the ultimate suffering that he engages in, that he allows himself to endure, is the removal of even the last bit of hope. And we, we, we see that really um, come through on, on the cross when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's like, just a complete, now he, he, is, he has turned himself away from the knowledge of what is going on and, and the understanding of what lies on the other side so that he might face this and see um, God completely turning his back on him. Um, point being, so that we don't ever have to. So that the suffering that we see Jesus going through is a suffering that we will never, never know. Thanks be to God. Um, and th this, uh, in, in the garden here, you know, we see that you know, throughout the, the whole passion account, you know, might say like when, when Peter denies him, you know, we, we, we would say like, oh, if I was in that place, I wouldn't deny him. You know, the, if, if the disciples do this and they do something wrong, we say, oh, oh I, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I'd be there for Jesus. And we see here the night that he's betrayed the disciples, those closest to him, they can't even stay awake. That's all. He's not asking them to face the crowds. He's not asking them to, you know, to, you know, or, or, or saying like, well, uh, confirm or uh, confess your faith in me before others, you know, like the opposite of, of Peter's denial. He's not asking them of, for anything that demands a whole lot of effort on their part. Simply stay awake. And they can't even do that. And so we, we see a nice contrast here between what, um, uh, of our complete inability to do anything towards our salvation. You know, this is, <laughs> this is Monday, Thursday. This is the, the, the night before the cross. Everything is, is, is in rolling and, and in motion here. Their role in it that night <laughs> is to stay awake and they can't even do that. Um, Jesus takes care of everything. And so the, the contrast we see between him and his disciples is, is you know, what, what do we accomplish? What do we contribute to our salvation, to, to our forgiveness? Nothing. Because we can't. We can't even stay awake. Um, Jesus obediently goes to the cross. Not, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Um, even forsaking that hope that he has, and, and refusing to allow himself to, um, to find comfort in those last few hours in that hope. He, he takes it away from himself so that way he can be in that moment, be suffering for us in the way that we would suffer um, so that we would never have to. It's, it's, it's just a wonderful, um, incredible thing that we begin to walk down this road with him this week in these readings. Um, but yeah, stay awake. We can't. <laughs> we, we can't even stay awake. We, we can't do anything good. It is only through Jesus Christ, only through the Holy Spirit, that we are able to do anything of, of value, <laughs> of, of anything good. Um, and he, he, he willingly went to the cross to enable us to to stay awake <laughs> not by our own power but through his um and so yeah it's gets kind of heavy this week obviously but um and certainly next week as well but uh, definitely a good reminder here of <laughs> our contribution to things versus his ours is nothing his is everything um so yeah wonderful wonderful stuff to start start our week here let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Blessings to you as you begin this week. Hope uh, you have a wonderful Monday. And uh, until tomorrow, peace be with you.